Hello, hello. Check it out. <laughs> In my warehouse, it is, um, well, actually, first of all, I'm Andrew from 510 Books. And this is my bookstore, movie store, or video store, music store, video game store. Um, yeah. So this warehouse has been converted into a retail space. And I had my third day, Sunday, uh, of my weekly sale today. So that ended a little while ago. Um, but it is Sunday, uh, what is it? February 6, 2022. And I want to talk about a few things. But also, you know, um, eBay, FBA, which is fulfilled by Amazon, and Merchant Fulfilled, or Fulfilled by Merchant, are um, not the same thing. So I'm going to dabble in that topic while I'll talk about some other stuff as well. Uh, basically, this is kind of what I talked about in that video I made a few weeks ago about why <clears throat> so many book resellers are leaving FBA for either Merchant Fulfilled or eBay or both of those. Um, and I've seen people do both. I've seen people leave it just for eBay, just for Merchant Fulfilled or doing a combination, but just dropping FBA. And the reason why this came up with came up uh, in my mind is that I saw a post in a very popular um, large Facebook group that is about reselling books on Amazon and eBay. And someone had posted about this exact thing where they, and I've seen them posting <clears throat> about this over time over the past couple of years where they've moved from Amazon over to eBay almost exclusively. I believe they still do Merchant Fulfilled, but they've gotten completely away from FBA, something that they used to do a lot of. Um, and the thing that really got me uh, and made me laugh and just think how ridiculous it was is they were essentially trashing Amazon, which is fine. I trash Amazon all the time. However, uh, they were just on the eBay boat completely 100% basically saying, coming up with reasons, justifications to only do eBay in comparison to FBA. They weren't talking about Merchant Fulfilled, but just versus FBA. And to me, the whole thing was, the whole argument was absurd because they're not the same. eBay is different than uh, FBA than Merchant Fulfilled on Amazon. They all, the closest, the two that are the closest, I would say, are Merchant Fulfilled and eBay, but there's tons of differences. So eBay is really great for, now let's talk about individual books or media, pieces of media, not lots, because of course you can't do lots on, for the most part, you can't do lots on Amazon. So clearly that is entirely different, but individual books, eBay is great for collectible books. So collectible and old books, uh, I would say books that are over 50, 60 years old, at least if not much older if not 100 plus years old. Uh, so collectible books that are older, that are not necessarily uh, extremely old, but are first editions or are signed copies, uh, limited editions that only, you know, 10,000 were printed, however many, so there's only so many out there. Um, those types of books, you know, whether they're 20 years old or whether they're 120 years old, are really great for eBay because you can take lots of photos, um, you can price it, well you can price it however you want on Amazon as well for the most part, but um, it's more of browsing. eBay is more for browsers that are looking around for what they want, specifically uh, collectors as well. Now you can sell a lot of that long tail stuff because a lot of that is long tail, it's a smaller market, a uh, small demand, and it takes tend to tends to take longer and a lot of those items go for more money. Like I said, older books, um, first editions, limited runs, uh, signed copies. So that kind of stuff does great on eBay. You can you can sell that on Amazon, Merchant Fulfilled, but you're not gonna, not the same experience, right? It's not where the photos are up front and center. People are gonna see them. Um, you can up, upload photos, of course, to Amazon, but it's, it's limited as to how many. Uh, it, it's different, right? It's just a different experience for the buyer and for the seller. So 
but they're the closest, right? But when it comes to, you know, reselling books, there's just some that make more sense on FBA. A lot that make more sense on FBA, especially ones, not exclusively, not entirely, but especially ones with barcodes that you can scan that are newer. Uh, I mean, they could still be 10 or 20 years old, you know, still have barcodes, but of course, newer books in the last couple of years, um, even last year, that kind of thing, that are still selling really well. A lot of those books that have barcodes will do really well on FBA. Some will do better on eBay. Some will do better on Merchant Fulfilled. Really, the bottom line is, if you're trying to make money, a profit, uh, trying to make profit, then you need to see where you can make more money and what's more important to you, selling it faster, um, getting it out of your hands, those kind of things. But ultimately, you want to make more profit. So if you can make more profit on Merchant Fulfilled over FBA, and there's less competition, et cetera, there's a lot of things to consider, then you're gonna go Merchant Fulfilled. But if FBA makes more sense, go FBA. So it's crazy to me to see that person post and and really, it's fine that they're bashing Amazon and all the issues because they have tons of issues for sellers, for third-party sellers, but the fact that they've completely given up on it and then making excuses like, oh, but I never even see books that make sense for FBA. But if you're in the book world, how are you not seeing books that have barcodes? You know, I mean, maybe you're only going to estate sales or you're only going to garage sales. Or you're only buying books that are collectible. It's possible, but it's still very unlikely you're not going to come across some books that have barcodes or that would make more sense on FBA. I think it's more of a thing that your eyes are only seeing the books that you want to see versus seeing all the books and then deciding which ones are even worth looking up, which you get over years of experience of reselling books on Amazon uh, and eBay. And then only looking those books up, either scanning some or looking some up manually, um, looking for certain things that make more sense on eBay. And also when you're scanning with the Amazon app, you can immediately see what makes more sense prof profitability wise um, between Merchant Fulfilled and FBA. So I got a donation today of three boxes of books, went through them. They mostly had barcodes, a couple didn't, you know, I don't know, 10 or so. It was about like 40, now probably like 50, 50 plus books, maybe 60 actually, because some of them are smaller. Um, but most of them I could scan. And as I was scanning them, the only ones I found worth reselling on Amazon were FBA. There were some that I could have done Merchant Fulfilled, but I would rather, well, first of all, I, I make more money FBA and also I get it out of my hands. I don't have to deal with the shipping and all that stuff. Um, so it just doesn't make sense. All those books wouldn't have made sense. Almost all of them, there was like maybe eight, 10 that I pulled out for FBA. Wouldn't make sense Merchant Fulfilled. Uh, and they probably wouldn't make sense eBay. I didn't check on eBay, but I'm not gonna bother if they make sense on FBA. So it's just crazy to me because you're leaving money on the table and you're just being obstinate instead of opening your eyes and seeing that you should use all of them, all the sales channels. And you're not the only one that's had issues with Amazon and you will continue to have issues with Amazon. And maybe sometimes it feels like they're picking on you, but they are probably not. Um, and you just gotta get over it, right? <laughs> it's just crazy to me that to close off Amazon as a sales funnel, especially FBA. Uh, because there's a much larger customer base, as we know, doesn't mean that, you know, shouldn't sell on eBay. I'm just saying that to give that up is crazy talk to me, <laughs> especially if you can get books donated to you or get them for super cheap. You know, it all depends on the profit margin. I got those books donated to me. So of course it, it's all profit, right? Except, except for me paying for inbound shipping and then potentially storage fees if it doesn't sell right away. But, you know, if you're having to buy those books for a dollar or two, a lot of those books I would not send in because there's not enough profit. But because I'm getting them for free, I can make three to six dollars profit off of them, let's say, on the low end, but they're going to be pretty quick sales. A lot of those were very high ranks. Sorry, very low ranks. What I meant was uh, the number of sales is very high uh, on a daily basis. Many copies being sold and a very low rank uh, sales rank. So, so, yeah, it's just crazy that you would just cut off a sales funnel. Hold on. Rather, it's cut off a sales channel. I don't know, just to get up on your soapbox and I guess feel good about the speech you're making about how great eBay is, which it is. But eBay has lots of issues too, as I've talked about in the past, how the sales, my sales went down dramatically um, to where they had been before because they made so many changes to their algorithms and the site and all that and it messed up a lot of people. 
And that's why I've got to do all three. I've got to do FBA. I've got to do Merchant Field. I've got to do eBay. I'm not going to give up. This is what FBA is. I'm not going to give up a business where I can scan things fast, get information really quickly on, on my cell phone, make a, which may, enables me to make a quick decision about whether I should sell it on FBA. And then if it's a yes, if it's a go, I just price it, put it to the side, do that over and over again, get enough together. I make a, you know, I scan them in, put the price, uh, put the sticker on them, put them in a box and ship them off. And then I'm done with them. Like I said, you only really have to do deal with disposing the books that they don't sell, eventually sell or repricing them. That's it. You're pretty much done. Why would you give up that opportunity when Amazon takes more than half of the load, really? Once, once they receive them, you know, yes, they're going to make mistakes. Of course they're, they're going to do boneheaded things, et cetera, et cetera. They have a huge workforce, whatever. I've had plenty of issues with them and I have plenty of issues with eBay, but why give up any of them? It makes no sense. Uh, if Etsy was, was, was turning into this amazing book selling channel, wouldn't you get into it? I mean, maybe <laughs> anyway, so my sale was today. That's my little rant. But my sale was today. It was a slow Sunday. My overall sales for all three days were much less than last weekend, but still good. Still good. Even if I did this or a little higher for the next three weekends, um, next three sales that I have this month, it'd still be a good month. But of course, I'm hoping that I do better. And next weekend is the Super Bowl weekend. So we'll see. Hopefully Friday and Saturday are better. But, you know, it wasn't so bad. Um, but def definitely less than when I did last weekend. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps with uh, helps more people to see the video, algorithms with YouTube, etc. If you are not subscribed, consider subscribing. Uh, subscriber numbers are growing. I can see that. And I appreciate it. Hello to all the subscribers. There's even people locally here that are seeing my videos. I don't know how, but they are. Um, either uh, YouTube is just showing it to them or they're looking at 5 to 10 books. I don't know. But... That's cool. <laughs> uh, and I talk about my entrepreneurial journey from seven and a half years ago, starting just doing FBA, reselling books on Amazon to now doing FBA, Merchant Field, eBay, and having a local warehouse space that's turned into a book store and other media store. Um, yeah, and all everything that goes into that. So if you think that kind of content is interesting to you, please subscribe. I'll see you next video. Take care.